Michael Carrick is a Manchester United legend, one of the most successful United coaches post Sir Alex Ferguson, despite it only being for a couple of games. His win percentage is on point, and now he has been gifted his first big managerial job. Unfortunately, we can't use him as a real manager. He's just not in the game, so we're going to have to create him. He's starting off at Middlesbrough, down in the championship, following in the footsteps of the likes of Frank Lampard, who did it with Derby County. It's Carrick's time to take over the helm at Riverside Stadium and return Middlesbrough to the Premier League and beyond. So BCHD's taking a back seat today as we're letting Carrick take over the borough. He's not looking too bad, you know. We've got him suited up in the fresh red tie, tried to make him look as realistic as possible. And he's got a job on his hands. He's a man on a mission. As at the time of recording, this club's currently sitting 21st in the championship, threatened by relegation. Let's hope we can turn around their form and take them to new heights as after they got relegated from the Premier League a couple seasons back. They just haven't really been the same since. Here's a starting 11 we're working with at Middlesbrough. They're operating in a 5-3-2 formation, which isn't really something I'm familiar with, but we're just going to stick with it for the time being. A few improvements can be made across the pitch, especially in the striking department, but on the bench, we've got the likes of two Aussies. We've got Riley McGree and Massimo Luongo. There's two players I'm very familiar with, and also former Manchester United Academy player Paddy McNair, who I believe played with Michael Carrick at some stage in his career. Tuba Akpom as well. Hop. Okay. The building blocks are here. This Middlesbrough team is taking me by surprise. I don't mind what we're working with here as it's a team of 37. Oh, we've got a couple of our best players on loan though. Zach Stefan at Man City. Alex Moat owned by West Brom. Let's see what we can make of this first season though as Carrick has a starting budget of 12 million pounds to spend. So we're going to have to invest wisely. We've got to take a look into the depths of the youth academy. Try and promote someone to the first team as as we have Nadi Hemed, no homegrown talent to look into. This is very concerning. A career mode rebuild where we could have used a homegrown talent. We just haven't been gifted one for some reason. So we're promoting the Algerian midfielder to the first team and hopefully dynamic potential does its job. Promotion in the first season isn't going to be extremely realistic as they want us to win the league title. Are you serious right now? Being thrown into the deep end right now. Here goes nothing. Summer transfer window. We're going to try and work some Michael Carrick magic on this Middlesbrough side and attempt to keep the board happy simultaneously. It's Carrick's first major play of the transfer market and we are focusing in on an English-based youth approach. Shaking the hands of his first major summer signing. Arriving from Chelsea, quite a raw talent, the teenager. It is Carney Chuck Wuemka. Let's just call him Chucky for short. And of course, a swap deal has been involved to kick off the transfer window and it was actually initiated by Chelsea. It's an F negotiation, but it sees Tuba Akpom, our starting striker head the other way. For some weird reason, they wanted him involved in the deal. Plus 17.5k. He's a box-to-box -box versatile midfielder that I believe can slot straight into our starting 11. No ifs or buts. He's got a bit to his game. He's dynamic, can play at cam and centre forward. At 18 years of age, this boy's got a big future ahead of him. The English scouting doesn't stop here. We're just out here poaching all the top tier talent that the big clubs just aren't using enough in their starting 11. We're promising to make them first teams stars here in the championship. Regular game time, week in, week out. As it's another long-term investment, Harvey Elliott arriving from Liverpool on a permanent basis. And we're not wasting any time. Carrick has got a clear vision and he's trying to execute it. But I think it's the perfect place to craft a future Premier League ballers team and really start to get the young gun wonder kids in early as Elliott grabs our number seven. He's going to be the marquee man for us in the opening campaign. We agreed to deal with Liverpool 4.1 million pounds, an absolute steal. And that is an A-grade signing. Top-notch stuff from Carrick in the transfer market. He's being savvy as the former United player stealing a potential England starter away from Liverpool. He's just the guaranteed poster boy for this Middlesbrough outfit and could lead them to Champions League glory. Forget Phil Foden, forget Mason Greenwood, the next superstar winger talent out of England is Cole Palmer and Michael Carrick has done his best to steal off his former rivals in his playing days. First it was Chelsea, second it was Liverpool, now it is Manchester City and he has selected his pickings here recruiting a brand new number 10 Cole Palmer on a permanent basis of course we are making sure he is ours as he arrives from the citizens for a measly 1.55 million pounds we're being effective and efficient with our transfer budget Carrick's just a natural master negotiator and he was just destined to become a manager one day 20 year old exciting youth prospect is showing great potential here is Carrick's first major departure he's had to make a player sale in order to raise a few funds 
They're not gonna lie. What more is a bit of dead wood? He's had to walk him out the door. The first walk of shame Michael's had to do with his career. It's heartbreaking, but it had to be done. It's purely business as Duncan Watmore hits the Sheffield United for 1.1 million. If dynamic potential works the way it's intended and it actually kicks into gear with this rebuild, I feel like we could have just pulled off the steal of the century. As we have picked up, I must admit, it is a bit of a Sir BCHD influence signing. Poaching one of the top 20 Golden Boy nominees, Italian Stallion wonder kid Miretti from Juventus. As he picks up the number 18, loving the limelight over here in England, all the paparazzi focusing on him. Central midfield Dynamo arrives initially on a 12-month loan deal. However, we have included a 6.2 million pound fee in order to make the deal permanent. We don't have the funds to make it happen just yet, but we'll get there. Now, Carrick spent the majority of this transfer window working to improve the midfield and our attacking options. However, now it's time to shift our attention towards the rear guard. We're in for a rock solid defender. We had to play this one smart. We had to delve into the free agency as the Mexican Cesar Montez will arrive for absolutely nothing. Signing on the dotted line will be one of our main starting center backs, a crucial first team player. I've never heard of him before. Don't know any idea of his playing history. He's at 77 overall, 25, yet to hit his prime, six foot three, everything you want and more in a defender. It's one defender in, one defender out. That allows us to open the door and let go of Carrick's former teammate, Paddy McNair, back in the Manchester United banter era days. It's probably gonna be even more awkward selling him at Middlesbrough. He is now departing the club, moving away from England to PSV for a fee of 3.1 million pounds. Kind of a little bit of regret about this one. It leaves a sour taste in the mouth, knowing their history together. However, we've got to keep that Miretti loan to buy agreement offer in mind. We need to raise the funds. Now we've had the quite youthful intake of players this summer to start off the window. We're gonna finish off with a bang as we've organized another swap deal this time with RB Salzburg, expressing our interest in Benjamin Sesco. We offered up 2.45 million pounds plus the finished striker Marcus Fors. We're gonna give that one the green light and make it happen. The Slovenian target man, one of the hottest prospects in Europe right now. The lanky striker will combine perfectly with Hop, the American up front as he picks up the number 11. I can just see he's got goals written all over him. He's a true poacher. A splendid addition to the squad. Those are the financials of the deal as we've been gifted a B. It's one of the first times in Grimo this year that I've been restricted with the amount of cash and funds we can spend as our financial department is loving us for this one. It's another free agent pickup. I had to do it. He was waiting there ready for the taking and we have gone out and invested in a Qatari talent. Found himself a brand new club, Akram Afif. Welcome your brand new left winger. It's a area which we're severely lacking in at the moment. With only five mil left in the bank and the Meretti offer still needing to be completed. I thought it was a smart choice and hey, the World Cup's right around the corner. It's on brands. He's fit the theme. Perfectly slots straight into the first team. Our spending days are over for now, but it doesn't mean the departures front gets any less attention. As we've had to ship out two players, we've got Matt Crooks headed to Celtic for 1.8 million pounds. And another minor sale thanks to our formation change. Some brand new tactics. The Carrick system doesn't really incorporate right wing back. So Darnell Fisher was surplus to requirements and shipped out to Granada for 1.25 mil. Thanks to those two sales, we've got 8 million pounds left in the budget and I'm more than happy to settle our buy option with Fabio Miretti. A measly 6.2 million pounds for the next Andrea Pirlo. Yes, please. I'll take that every day of the week and twice on Sundays. He'd be future captain material if only had a game face scan. We've had to focus on the long game. It's been one of our first major rebuilds and projects of FIFA 23 so far. And here is our brand new starting 11. New formation as we've opted with the 3-2-1-4. Carrick's attempting to imprint his own style and make a brand new system here. Most of our signings incorporated into the starting 11, jumping straight in. Let's cross our fingers and hope they can gel together well in season one. Just knew it was going to happen, didn't you? Carrick's Middlesbrough boys have taken the championship by storm, finishing in first place here in the second tier with 93 points, beating out the promotion specialist Norwich to take home the title, avoided the playoffs, and are back in the Premier League. Burrow are back to the top as we take a look at the relegation standings here. We've got Rotherham, Blackpool, and Wigan all going back down to League One. Whilst the Borrow completely assert their dominance in the other competitions, the Cups, did they make any cheeky runs? Knocked out in the FA Cup pretty early in round three to Fleetwood 2-1. And the Carabao Cup saw them get knocked out in round one 3-0 to Birmingham. Whilst the main stars of this 
team, we're going to find out who Carrick's promotion protagonists were by goals and assists. And Akram Afif, the random Qatari free agent we signed, ended up being our signing of the season. Player of the year. Starting at left wing, our only left winger at the club. Scored 39 goals and 9 assists. 48 goal contributions in 48 appearances. He's absolutely unstoppable. Carrick's found a diamond in the rough. And Benjamin Sesko, we hyped him up. And it's just poetry in motion. As the Slovenian scored 22 goals, second highest goal scorer, four assists for the 20-year-old growing up a plus six. We had Riley McGree in off the bench, the Aussie with eight goals and seven. As Matthew Hopp couldn't compete with Rodrigo Muniz, who was only on loan. So hopefully the American will get some more game time in the Premier League. Cole Palmer with four goals and two assists out on the right-hand side. Our captain, Harvey Elliott, I was expecting a little bit more from our attacking midfielder. 12 assists and one goal. Dynamic potential, or at least the initial growth here in season one, is working a treat. Fabio Miretti pulling the strings from midfield with four assists. Our highest rated asset is Benjamin Sesko, our attacking threat in up front. Not gonna lie, I wouldn't have minded another season in the championship, avoiding promotion and just allowing the youth players to grow and develop in the second division. But here we are. Our success might have come to us too quickly. Now it is time for survival. What can we do with our new Premier League budget? Can Michael Carey handle the pressure in the top flight we're about to find out in comparison to season one we've been gifted with a top flight war chest of 51 million pounds this young team i think it needs a bit more experience and quality injected in it if we want any chance of staying up as there was only one man i had my eyes on the new clean sheet king will be headed into the riverside stadium to start this premier league campaign i wanted to sort out the goalkeeping department earlier we are getting done with two signings here first our permanent first team goalkeeper keeper Diogo Costa. The Portuguese shot stopper face scanned and all will be joining us here in the top flight. Big money spent on him. Most Carrick has ever splashed on a player 31.6 million pounds. Whilst we were scouting for new goalkeepers, I ended up stumbling upon a free agent. He's a random released youth academy player. Could even possibly be a regen, but at 19 years of age, Makiek Back, the Polish goalkeeper. He'll be our trusty backup just in case Costa gets injured or suspended. Sorted out the goalkeeping spots. We don't have to stress about it anymore and we can pretty much now just focus on the rest of the team improving and developing that's our what third free agent signing of the video so far we were off to a red hot start when it comes to signings but here in the prem we've got to say a few goodbyes we've got to let some players go after that major spending we've had to raise a few funds and therefore tommy smith is headed to fire and at 41.5 million pounds and our next sale isaiah jones now joining the premier league side wolves for 6.4 million carrick's taking a little bit of a risk with this one but we're probably for a high risk car reward kind of situation. No real Premier League experience for this French wonder kid. However, the defender will be arriving from Olympic Lyon. If he's good enough, he's old enough is the kind of mantra we're trying to interpret. I think he can be our brand new starting defender, Castello Luqueba. What a name for 22 million pounds on the dot. We managed to get him below his valuation as well. So the Carrick negotiation skills are top tier right now, considering that's pretty much been our entire budget wasted. Taking the number two shirt, he is showing great potential potential and I can't wait to see what he achieves in that three-man back line. I don't know how, I don't know why, in what world would Giorgio Scalvini be a free agent? For some reason, Atalanta didn't renew his contract. I stumbled upon him and he is begging for a new club. I, it's just too good of an opportunity not to take up. Oh, we can't even afford him. He's free and we just can't afford his wages. It's hard out here on these streets, man. The financial situation we're in. Not more too late. Opportunity lost and Carrick really fumbled the ball there. As soon as we gave him his flowers, the financial team completely ruined that. He's back his bags off to Bournemouth. Could that be a transfer to come back to bite us? I hope not. Yes, how the team's looking. Carrick's caught at a bit of a crossroads, not really knowing where to spend the cash, or at least the rest of it. We only got two million pounds, so nothing much to work with. Two major improvements in the rear guard. The rest of the team pretty much stays the same. The new boys are ready to cause havoc up here in the top flight. So let's see what the go is here in season two. Our objective was just to survive here in the Premier League and make sure we achieve salvation. We did exactly Exactly that exceeded expectations and managed to get a mid-table finish up here in 11th, nearly breaking into the top 10 at the first time of asking. Carrick's Middlesbrough finishing with 53 points and in the grand scheme of things, only like six points away from European qualification as we move to the top. It is Chelsea to win the league by one point in a three-horse title race amongst Man City, Liverpool and Spurs. Pretty high finishes for the likes of Newcastle and Crystal Palace as we were just one point behind ninth place Arsenal. It was a magical FA Cup final run to the big dance over at Wembley and Manchester United showed no mercy on a former legend of the club. Michael Garrick losing out 4-0 on the day. Oh, that one's got to hit hard, but what a run it was, beating out the likes of Arsenal 
in the semis. First piece of major silverware loss for Carrick. Oh, it's going to sting. It's going to hurt. But these are the kind of L's he's going to take on his managerial career. As in round three of the Caribou Cup, they lost out 2-0 to Wolves. Now, who are Carrick's main Premier League performers? Who could he rely on week in, week out? As it's Matthew Hope, the American striker. I'm so glad he's performing in this rebuild. As we didn't get to sign him in the Leeds United USA rebuild. 25 goals and 2 assists for the striker in up top. It's another outstanding campaign from our Qatari winger, Afif. He got himself 31 goal contributions as Benjamin Sesko, despite his output being minuscule. Comparison to Hoppe, he still managed to get a plus four to his overall. Now the 82 rated Slovenian. I'm just praying we see the change in Hope's dynamic potential come season three because he deserves such a higher rating, such a bigger boost. Harvey Elliott, the captain, definitely improving his output upon last season. Eight goals and five assists for him. Cole Palmer from the right-hand side with four goals and four. As Fabio Miretti, the main beating heart and soul of the team. The Italian Stallion reaching an 80 plus three, three goals and four assists. Coburn off the bench with three goals. Diogo Costa only managed four clean cheats, but it was enough to get him to an 84 overall. This is why the championship would have done the younger wonder kids like Chucky a world of good, because now we're in the Prem, he's not good enough to start. The likes of Riley McGree and Payero are starting over him, so we might need a brand new sentiment investment come season three. Disappointing to see, but that's the way the cookie crumbles here in the big leagues as our highest valued asset now is Diogo Costa as Sesco is dethroned to second place. We're building something special here with Carrick at the helm as Borro enters season three. Aiming to go even higher, it would be a miracle. It would be a sensational start if we were able to qualify for Europe, but it's still a pipe dream. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Season three sees our budget dwindle down to 35 million pounds, so even less despite us staying in the Premier League and reaching a cup final. We're gonna have to make do and spend our finances wisely here with Carrick, the master negotiator. We had one mission this summer as we've set out to get Miretti a brand new midfield partner. In the middle of the park, Carrick is invested in a left midfielder. However, we are planning to convert him into a central mid. It's the pole arriving from Roma for 25 million pounds. Nikola Zalewski at an 80 overall is deemed it a good squad player and that is a de decent buy even though we got him well below his value. Thanks to our financial situation not really being the best, it's probably going to be our only major arrival this summer. Don't worry, we're sorting him out with the central midfield training. He's getting on it straight away. There's no time being wasted as Jose Mourinho was a big fan and now it's time for Carrick to deploy him here at Middlesbrough. It saddens me to report that we made a few rookie mistakes headed into season three. Unfortunately, we didn't renew some contracts and some players have left on a free. We were unable to get any financial gain out of them. As two of our central defenders, Dijk Skill heads off to Martimo and Clark now joins Fulham. Yeah, I can't be one to complain about the transfer budget the board gives us when I'm making silly moves like that. It's a satisfying signing though that clicks straight into that midfield duo, Miretti and Zalewski. Carrick's 3-2-1-4 system looking as dangerous as ever. They hope second season syndrome doesn't strike on the borough and they can stay up, continue to achieve goals and Carrick's boys can ascend up the ranks. This year's the year we decide to put our foot down and become a Premier League staple. We've closed the curtain on our third campaign in charge and our second in the Premier League and we have ended up in ninth. So two places aside than last season, eight more points than last time around as well, but it only ended up, I believe, is that even Conference League? I don't even know if we've qualified for Europe. The board wanted us to get Europa League. I can tell we haven't done that. Oh, so it's going to be tough. It's going to be a struggle as West Ham and Wolves beat us to the punch. The European football, Manchester City take home the title as Chelsea, Liverpool and Manchester United round up the top four. Meanwhile, at the other spectrum of the table, it is Brighton, Southampton and Sheffield all getting relegated to League One. Over in the FA Cup, we couldn't replicate our magical run to the final last season as we were knocked out in round six, 1-0, with again Manchester United coming to haunt Carrick. As the Carabao Cup saw us knocked out to Leeds, 5-4 on penalties in round four, Chelsea taking it home. Tottenham, it's the history of the Tottenham. We didn't complete too many objectives in the board's eyes. I mean, the only major one was no Europa League football qualification, but we do get a 54 manager rating week. We're on our last few chances here with Middlesbrough's board as we're gonna take a look at the top performers this season. It's a 25 goal Slovenian special from Benjamin Sesko with 44 appearances. He was our club top goal scorer with 28 goal contributions. Now to plus four, the 22 year old is 86. We've got Akram Afif who just continues to surprise and provide performances. At 28, he is in his prime right now. 19 goals and eight assists for him. Matthew Hoppe with a well-deserved plus five now hitting the 80s. Our top goal scorer last season takes a back seat this time around with 15 goals and two. Cole Palmer on the right hand side with eight goals and two assists. It was Nikola Zalewski's debut campaign, eight goals and five. We successfully trained him into a central midfielder and he's 
partnership with Miretti has been nothing but spellbinding. Expecting a little bit more output and production from the likes of Harvey Elliott, our captain. Has our number seven been worthy of the armband with only three goals and three assists? The man in between the sticks. I said he's going to be the clean sheet king when he arrives here, but he's only kept three this season in 36 appearances. Not looking too good. Highest valued asset. It's Benjamin Sesco topping the charts with an 82.5 million pound valuation. And our free agent signing, we could potentially make 60, 70 million pounds profit from him, but the Qatari sensation is here to stay. Our squad depth is looking pretty thin at the moment. It's time now to invest in quality in off the bench. We know our starters. We know our best 11. So multiple competitions arise. We need to be prepared. So Carrick, get ready. Season four is going to be brutal. And this time, our transfer budget is going to stand at 59 million pounds. It's the most money we've had to work with so far. So we've got to get to work. Now, I think it's time to finally address an area which we've just been papering over the cracks over recently. It is the defensive department and the players just simply aren't good enough. We need upgrades and we need potential signings that can revolutionize our clean sheet stats. We need better coverage for our man Costa in between the sticks. That's why we've gone after a South American defender, Piero Hincapié from Sevilla. He arrives for 25.6 million pounds. It is a swap deal and you know us her BCHD swap deal and you see one. We're influencing Carrick in this transfer market and he's taken our advice. The player headed the other way involved in the swap deal was that Argentinian Payero, the centre midfielder. So his new home is Sevilla. Meanwhile, the Ecuadorian will be our left-sided centre back considering he's versatile. He can play as a left-back or centre-back. Fry and our free agent Mexican also weren't going to cut it to be part of our three-man back line. And that's why we've gone after invested in another homegrown talent. It's been a while since we've signed a player from England. Carrick is welcoming over Mark Guehi. Brought him back to his homeland as he joins high-flying Middlesbrough. Aiming for the top four spots this season. We picked him up on a deal. It's a permanent transfer. 40.2 million on the dot. Arise from Inter. Hey, it's two A-grade signings in a row. I'll take it. We've been drained dry. Less than a thousand pounds left in the piggy bank. Two defensive upgrades. Two major signings. As that sees Montez and Fry both become backup options. Our strongest starting team headed into season number four. Catrick's Borough are looking to progress even further and challenge the status quo here in England. Now, would you take a look at that? Runners up in the Premier League. Carrick coming not really oh so close, but bridesmaid to Manchester City by 11 points. It's a big gap to close. The margin was pretty sizable. However, Liverpool and Chelsea finishing up in the top four, but that's what happens when you don't have any other European competitions to focus on. There was no Conference League to distract us as Arsenal and Manchester United drop down lower into the table. Take a look at the other end of the spectrum. It is Nottingham Forest, Brentford and Norwich all going down to the Championship. A brilliant showing from Carrick's boys as Burrow again didn't make it to the FA Cup final. In round five, getting knocked out to Premier League champions, Man City 3-1. Over in the Carabao, it was a semi-final run, losing out on aggregate 5-4 to Arsenal again. As the Champions League saw an all-English final, Liverpool winning 2-1 against City in the big dance. The Europa League saw Borussia Dortmund win that out 2-1 scoreline. And the Conference League, which we didn't participate in, it was first to take it home against Espanyol 2-0. We focused on youth from day one, and they are just excelling. With a mixture of homegrown wonder kids and some well-known big talents across Europe with a couple of free agents chucked in there like Akram Afif, Aquatari winger who is just stealing the show right now. The 29 year old he's approaching his 30 showing no signs of slowing down. 31 goals, 12 assists. For the first time in this video I've been able to say double figures in both departments. 43 goal contributions for our number 10 and he deserves every single one of them as Matthew Hoppe with another great goal scoring season. 21 goals outscoring our Slovenian Sesko. That little strike duo scoring 40 goals between them with no backup striker. Absolutely insane stuff. We've been lucky with injuries. I'll say that as Cole Palmer on the right hand side proving why he should be starting. 10 goals and 3 assists. Harvey Elliott the captain stepping up to the plate and releasing his inner playmaker this time around. 7 goals and 17 assists as Riley McGree has made his way. I've kept him this whole time. I was expected to sell him along the way but the Aussie making his name known here in the Prem. 10 goal contributions. Luke Abel from the back with 9 assists which is quite an interesting stat. Getting the same as Fabio Miretti from midfield. The Paul Nicholas Zalewski is starting to fall out of favor in the first team. For some reason, Riley McGree has just taken over in terms of minutes. We've seen improvement here. The clean sheet stat nine for our boy Diogo Costa in the middle of the sticks as we take a look at our highest valued asset. The Slovenian still way out in the lead with that 90 million pound market value as Miretti is second place. We envision qualifying for any European competition to be a success this season, but runners up in the Prem, that was a whole different territory for Carrick and his men. Now let's see what season five has to offer with multiple competitions. Do we get the budget we deserve. Ah, oh, alright. 144 million pounds. 
because now we're talking. I can see us make use of that this summer. Now let's let Carrick go wild. Whilst hunting down at the bargain bin, despite our newfound wealth, we still wanted to see who was available on the free agency. And we've brought in a Champions League edition for absolutely nothing. A little bit of experience as well. Can act as a mentor slash tutor for the younger talents coming up through the first team. It is the Croatian Marcelo Brozovic. Why not? I think Carrick can appreciate a fellow centre mid slash CDM as well. Hopefully he's just a great addition to the locker room at the end of the day. Of course it's an A grade sign and nothing's better than a free deal. This man's been one of our main targets for the rebuild. We've severely lacked in some Brazilian flair. A bit of South American magic on the wings and that's exactly what we've invested in here. We've gone out of our way to get this man to sign on the dotted line. It is Brazil's up and coming wonder kid in real life, Gabriel Varon. He still didn't make the move from Porto. We managed to negotiate a 50 million pound deal with the Portuguese outfit. It's an F negotiation. I don't care because it's exactly what we need. He can provide perfect backup on either flank and even start over Palmer. It's amazing to see the progression and the types of talent that Carrick can now attract to this extremely ambitious club. So welcome over, lad. We've gone back to back. Carrick is not afraid to spend big and boast our financial freedom here in this transfer market. It's the backup strike I was talking about from last season. We couldn't afford him and we've had to wait another year to get him. It is the French striker, Ekitike. I was looking at some other options as well, but this guy's name is just too good to let down. Like, we just had to sign him on the name basis alone. The friendship man could easily come off the bench. He's given a cheeky wing to the camera. He takes our number nine jersey and he's going to be arriving from Osasuna. Getting on the plane from Spain for 68.5 million pounds. It's Carrick's most expensive deal yet. Our business has not slowed down one bit. Hugo will We'll arrive at Middlesbrough. Let's see if the Frenchman can adapt to the Premier League and become our main source of goals this year. Thanks to a couple of pieces of Deadwood leaving on a free because we didn't renew their contract last season. We left it with an extremely small squad so we've gone out and still hunted through the bargain bin of the free agency. We needed to increase that depth no matter what as we have a backup cam and option just in case RV Elliott gets injured. Nadiem Amiri joins us on a free. The German playmaker signing a one year contract and we have yet another backup winger. The Spaniard De Frutos. 80 rated, 29 Nine years of age can play on either side of the wing and it'll be a great rotational utility option. That now takes our squad total up to 24 players, so not too high, not too low. We've hit the sweet spot. Considering we had just little to no money left like you, we usually do, I decided why not? Let's just stir the pot and have the former United legend sign an ex-City player as we've gone after Kalichi Iheanacho. You bet he's a free agent. The Nigerian striker being an extreme backup option and of course, picking him up for nothing. There's really no risk we can take. Garrick just wanted to to express that inner shithousery in him and bring him over to Middlesbrough. Take an ex-City player under his wing and get him to be a red. It's been an extremely busy summer. Busier than I expected, especially with all those free agent deals we were able to finesse. Here is our strongest starting 11 ready to take on season 5 and our backup options to bring out off the bench. The super stubs are now starting to look dangerous. It's Carrick's managerial European debut and look what group we get drawn into. Group C alongside Real Madrid, RB Salzburg and Celtic. Not the group of death by any stretch, but who knows, this far into the future in career mode, they could all be decent sides. It's a mid-season transfer business to report on, quite a rarity when it comes to these rebuilds. However, we had Dale Fry submit a transfer request. He wasn't happy being a backup dancer. He wanted first team minutes, but unfortunately now our day one centre-back has joined Liverpool for £22 million. The Englishman just wasn't happy, and I'm not willing to keep a bad egg in the dressing room. We don't need those negative vibes, son. Now, here are our season five results. We've dropped down from second to fourth, so just secure in Champions League qualification. It seems like the multiple competitions did affect the squad's performances overall as Chelsea win the league against Liverpool. We beat out the likes of City, United and Arsenal to that fourth place spot. Carrick flexing his team's muscle in the top regions of the table now as Brighton, Aston Villa and Watford all get relegated. Our bad luck in the FA Cup still reigns strong as in the semi-finals getting knocked out 2-1 to Brentford, a winnable game. Unfortunately, it just wasn't to be and we're still longing for a piece of silverware as in the Carabao Cup nothing happened either it was a round four elimination to Arsenal 2-1 in the Champions League though our debut season this is how it all went down as we finished top of the group insane stuff Real Madrid knocked out to the Europa League RB Salzburg coming through with us to the round of 16 as we lost out against RB Leipzig 3-1 on aggregate which saw an early elimination earlier than I would have liked as in the end the eventual winners were Borussia Dortmund 2-0 in the final against City PSG versus Real Madrid was the Europa League final. The further you go in FIFA 23, Karimo, the, the weirder things happen as Monaco take out the Conference League 3-1 against Besiktas. We're going to be competing in the high levels come season six. However, who was he 
Season 5 top performers. We've got Akram Afif, of course he's at the top of the table. Our chart-topping Qatar club legend, now hit 30 years of age, but that hasn't stopped him one bit. 33 goals, 13 assists, the only player to get double figures in both departments. Insanity. To think that he was just a random free agent I stumbled upon. He has built a legacy, legend status at this club, just like the striker Benjamin Sesko, the Slovenian with 30 goal contributions this season. The new boy Hugo Ekitike, the French gunslinger with 16 goals and 6 assists in his first campaign and the debut season for Veron. Saw him score 13 and 2. Matthew Hopp understandably took a back seat. Our super sub with 8 goals in off the bench as Harvey Elliott the captain. He started to turn a little bit more consistent now with 16 assists. The playmaking department proven to be his specialty. Miretti and Zalewski, that midfield combo still proving to work wonders as Cole Palmer came through off the bench with 4 goals and 1. It was double figures in terms of clean sheets for Costa as he saw 12 with an improved defense in front of him and it's resulted in more clean sheets which you love to see. Two players are also valued over 100 million pounds. We've got Miretti coming through in second. Sesco obviously in that number one spot and a fifth valued at pretty much 100 million pounds. It's insane to think about where he's come from. Michael Carrick has turned him into an absolute demon. Carrick's Middlesbrough is an attacking machine that shouldn't be messed with and season six might be their year. It might be their time to unleash all their anger out on the Champions League. So let's see if they got a better chance at it the second time around. Because as the years go by, I think I'm just falling in love with this squad more and more. The team, the dynasty we've built here so far is absolutely amazing as we're greeted with an £158 million transfer budget to add to this super squad. A Middlesbrough OG, Fry, decided to disrespect the vision, give up on the project, so we've gone ahead and replaced him with a major money signing right here. It's a homegrown talent as well. An Englishman joins the side again. Fiki Otomori arriving from Barcelona. It's a statement signing, I'll tell you that for free. Our 90 rated centre back is going to be a guaranteed starter, becoming the brand new leader for the back line. An attacker's worst nightmare, and it was a swap deal with Riley McGree headed the other way, as we included 66.2 million pounds in order to entice the Catalans. Tomori was disrespected at Chelsea, never really given an opportunity, but Carrick's here to give it to him. Now, I don't even know where to begin, how to prepare you for this next signing, because we just start that kind of club now. We can attract the top tier talent Ballon d'Or contending ballers. We have got Jude Bellingham in his prime, in his peak. Another 90 plus rated player to join the squad and we are visionary. We are after that quality over quantity this season. If they're not proven to be a starting 11 contender, we don't want them. Bellingham and Tomori fit the billing. They've got the skills to pay the bills. We're up right now and they're willing to join another swap deal. It was involved as one of our free agents, Amiri, will head the other way to Roma of all clubs. Yeah, Bellingham was playing out his career over in Serie A, the Italian capital. I don't know what attracted him there, but the 24-year-old, 91 overall, one of the world's best, ended up splashing 97.3 million pounds to lure him back over to England. But hey, every single penny is going to be worth it. Yeah, I think we've been handed the luck of the draw when it comes to our Champions League group here in our second time round in the competition. Group F drawn against Roma, Osasuna, and Dinamo Kiev. So Bellingham will be up against his former employers. Surely we should be topping that group no questions asked. With another season of team chemistry and bonding, plus some mega money signings to add into the mix, we've got some cult heroes, club legends, all in one team. If we didn't make it far in the Champions League this season, it would be a complete failure. So let's see what Carrie can help them achieve this time around. Now, if this success is anything to go by, I've got high hopes for our other competitions, as Michael Garrick has finally won his first piece of silverware since winning the championship. It's the Premier League title, and on the final day, we took down Manchester City. The team that stole it from us a couple of years ago. We came runners up. Now it's their turn and Middlesbrough are champions of England. Besides Liverpool, Spurs and Chelsea, I mean Leeds, Fulham up in the top eight. Manchester United down in 10th. 2028 is definitely a weird year. Arsenal and Everton down in the lower tier of the table. Norwich, Newcastle and Burnley all going down. It was the domestic cup competitions where Carrick just failed at every stage. In round five it saw an elimination to Liverpool 2 one. And in the Carabao Cup, again, coming oh so close, losing out to Manchester United, 3-2 in aggregate in the semis. However, the competition where it all matters, we set out to win the group. We did exactly that with 16 points, remaining undefeated, and get matched up against Barcelona in the round of 16, where it was a 2-1 win. The result that got them over the line in the second leg against Sporting Lisbon, it was a 4-3 comeback. Again, doing the business in the second leg as the semi-finals saw an all-English clash. It was up against Chelsea, and the 4-3 win got them over the line to meet Borussia Dortmund in the big dance.
chance. Honestly, if I had money on it, I was expecting to pace PSG every single day of the week, but hey, here we are up against the Germans. Now, this is a matchup of dreams for many reasons, as it's Bellingham's former employers, and Dortmund have already won the Champions League so far in this rebuild, so we can't count them out, as our top goal scorer this season was the Qatari man himself. The winger that can do no wrong, he can do it all. 41 goals for a thief and 7 assists. Where would we be without this man? I'm so glad I put Ben to paper on that deal. Benjamin Sesko this time around getting 26 and 6. Ekitike doing his best in up front now at an 88 overall. 14 goals for him. Hop off the bench with 9 as Jude Bellingham's first time in a Middlesbrough shirt getting himself 8 goals and 7 assists. Gabriel Veron on the right hand side couldn't replicate our left winger's success only with 7 goals and 4 assists but it's decent output nonetheless as Fabio Miretti definitely got his assist game up this year. 14 goal contributions for the Italian Stallion but he can't compare to our captain Harvey Elliott who will be leading the lads out tonight. Could even potentially be lifting the trophy as 24 assists for him is absolutely obscene. An attacking midfield masterclass from the Englishman as even our backup brigade are getting in amongst the action. Vicky Otomori getting a goal in his first stint at the club and this is your full view of the rest of the squad. Diogo Costa with 13 clean sheets. You love to see it. Our Portuguese shot stopper and the rest of the team. There's only 22 of them. Not that much to cover. Probably one of the smallest squads we've ever gone all the way with. With Sesco rating the ranks being the most valuable on the transfer market. That 148.5 million pound price tag. Bellingham comes close as it's Meretti to just gain over that 100 million pound mark. Here are the two team sheets doing battle tonight. It's a fight for the Holy Grail as Dortmund still have the likes of Adeyemi. They've got Camavinga in the midfield. Bastoni at the back. Bakayo Saka out on the right and Martinez in between the sticks. They aren't here to play around. They mean business. The stage is set. Could this be the location where Carrick guides Middlesbrough to their first piece of European silverware? It's a dark, rainy European night and on neutral turf, the boys are going to battle, hoping for that Champions League trophy to have red and white ribbons all over it by the end of the 90. Potentially extra time and penalties. Who knows what this game has in store for us. Two major Goliaths here in 2028 as we get this game kicked off. Here we go. Miretti guarding the ball nicely. We've got a fifth into Ekitike. He puts the ball through and the flag's going to be raised. We thought we got the perfect start with a three-minute breakthrough, but Sesko's goal gets ruled out. A nice switch up here. Sesko back inside to Harvey Elliott. Ekitike, nice little fake around as a fifth. Nice cut around. He was searching for the cross. It didn't turn out the way he wanted. Azeki Tike nearly had a powerful blast at goal, but didn't materialize into anything as Miretti with the finish shot from around the corner outside the box. Our Italian stallion in the 10th minute breaks the deadlock here and does the Mbappe celebration. He's got no chill tonight. Whips out a world-class strike and curls it around Demi Martinez. He didn't see that one coming. Not at this early stage in the game. And our number 18 gets us 1-0 up. Carrick's boys take the lead. And it's scintillating stuff from our maestro in the middle of the park. He takes no prisoners tonight. Dortmund though still dangerous and what an instant response as Brian Gill tests Diogo Costa. He has to palm it away. Katike. Waits for runners in the middle. It's brilliant attack and play as a thief has a run inside the box, cuts it back. The cross inside and Sesco's there for the taking. Sesco heads it down. It's Ekatike with the attempted bicycle kick. Outside the foot pass to a thief who runs forward. We've got no options in the middle besides Bellingham who finds his partner in Miretti, who can set up Ekatike here as Dortmund's defense opened up for the taking. And our Frenchman doubles the lead in the 22nd minute. Our number nine with an absolutely devastating strike. And make sure Middlesbrough get that two-goal cushion they deserve. Push forward at the right moments. These counter-attacks have been brutal, and we're taking our chances. Cross-body shot. Carrick's loving what we're seeing right now as we go 2-0 to the good. Sesco. Offloads to Gabriel Veron. He cuts back inside. Benjamin Sesco now with the opportunity. He does a little ball roll, but Emi Martinez equal to the strike. And that was the best moment of the night. Gabriel Veron leapt like a salmon. And it's back to Veron. And he blazes that one over the bar, which could have potentially been our third and could have deaded off the game. But Ian Hill now back inside to Adeyemi, who finds the Spaniard with the power shot. And oh my goodness. Diego Costa dealt with it well. As Miretti tries to track back Adeyemi, offloads to Saka. And now with the chance, it's Diego Costa keeping us in it. Big criminal for us to concede before half time, but Dortmund are trying to put us in that situation. Attempting to contain Adeyemi as he enters the box. 
He's got no other options besides Saka in the middle who cuts it back and it's a major chance for Dortmund and they fail to take it. Get another chance to cross it in as it's a brilliant opportunity deflected in a way. Now Qatari man just showing off all his skills tonight but Adeyemi was having none of it but it's half time nonetheless. We go into the sheds at 2-0 up. It's a dangerous lead to have in football. We need a smart tactical team talk in order to see out the next 45. Adeyemi on kickoff. Wasting no time here is Brian Hill for Dortmund. Don't know how many men to commit forward as a thief back inside to Eketike, who could have had his double, but Martinez got down low and parried away. Wants a nice delivery inside. We've got a headed opportunity, and again, Adeyemi finds the ball inside. It's Costa again, and he's fighting hard for his Champions League final clean sheet. Ball whipped inside. It's Saka. And again, Costa equal to it. Adeyemi now coming through Kamavinga with Saka in an abundance of space to Mori. Dortmund now attempting to half the deficit here as Adeyemi's got options. He's going to go for goal and it's off the crossbar. That's the closest they've come. The woodwork saving us this time. Blocked away by Mitchell, but back and forth counterattacks. We're trading blows at the moment. Still trying to get that goal to get them back into the game. As Adeyemi now over to Saka. Bukio Saka! And he's missed the target. I think Costa got a fingertip to it. And he's been our main man tonight. And can we deflect it away? As Costa. I don't need to say it again. He's just repelling everything at the moment. Managed to get clear as Harvey Elliott. Stop dead in his tracks. It's Eduardo Camavinga who finds Bernardo Silva. And for the second time, Dortmund hit the crossbar. We're counting our lucky stars at the moment. I, I don't know how they haven't even scored tonight. As look at this from Adeyemi. Finds Saka and how it's unseen before. It's a superhuman-like performance. He's Oh my goodness gracious me. He just might be the best goalkeeper I've ever used in FIFA. Harvey Elliott finds Sesko and Laran and it's Gabriel Veron who looked like he was all on his own as he cuts back inside to beat out Mitchell. Gabriel Veron's shot was dipping and the third was oh so close. Ten minutes left to play and it's 2v1. All of a sudden, Bernardo Silva involved. Tomori recovers well and Tomori gets caught out in possession and we can't afford these silly mistakes and again, unable to get it out of our own half. Karamati Yemi. It is Bernardo Silva offside nonetheless. Oh, a thief. Sends his defender to the shops. As he continues on this run, the Qatari finds the ball inside. It's Harvey Elliott. Is it going to bobble over the line for us? And what has gone on there? A defensive mishap from Borussia Dortmund after all their hard work, creating chance after chance. Committed a couple of our players forward. A thief's ball inside completely split the defense open. And it was a misfire, a miss hit, a deflection. What was Mitchell doing? We'll never know. But the CPU with a brain fart moment. That could quite possibly be the most bizarre Champions League final goal I've ever seen scored. Dortmund should feel robbed. They should feel cheated. Dortmund not giving up this easy. They're a team of champions. They've won it before. And they're being humbled out here tonight as Miretti attempts to get it away. Adeyemi still involved. It's Saka cleared off the line. And that will be that. If I was Borussia Dortmund right now, I'd want our boy Diogo Costa to be drug tested straight after the match. It was a superhuman-esque performance from the Portuguese in between the sticks. And single-handedly kept us in the match at times, even though we were 2-0 up. But could have been Dortmund's night either way. They were unlucky. We got the rub of the green. And that's all that matters. Middlesbrough and Michael Carrick's rebuild success here in 2028. Yet another FIFA 23 rebuild challenge in the books. We might have just witnessed the best goalkeeping performance ever. It's a major night in club history and they've only gone on to do it in the nice away blue strip. They're going to lift up the holy grail tonight and if you guys did go on to enjoy, make sure to drop the video a like down below, hit subscribe, turn on the notifications and let me know what are the rebuild challenges I should do next on the channel. Follow me on all my socials, they'll be linked down in the description box below. And as always, I've been Sir BCHD. That has been the Carrick Middlesbrough journey, and I'll catch you all in the very next video. Baby, don't walk away from me. Baby, little thing, I need your company. Baby, come and ride with me. Loving on you, how we supposed to be. Well, that's how we supposed to be. Well, that's how we supposed to be. Well, that's how we supposed to be. Baby, just you and me. Baby, like a Fly, she all the pilot when I undress Shawty hate when I get violent I'm the pressure On the block and I be styling Young and wildin' See me in the foreign, they be profiling Gotta do it for the gang, gotta stay solid Already on 10, talking landslide wins Pretty 
only thing, living with no guidance. Don't you pull up with your hand out, cause I'm the man now. Play with shoddy, that's a man now. Talking murder, you too worried about the burn.